Many months ago, the Florida Maquis advised that all eyes should be on Brazil. And now, it's starting to be the case that they are driving the economic engine of the Western Hemisphere. What many people don't realize is the population of Brazil and Mexico is more than the population of the United States and Canada. Let me say that again. If you took the combined population of the U.S. and Canada, it would not reach the combined population of Brazil and Mexico. There are 600 plus million people living from our southern border down to the tip of Argentina. If it were an invasion, you would know it. Because while a lot of people liken the um, left to being anti-gun, I have shown, and it's pretty easy to see, just with cursory research, that even though many governments down here lean to the left, they are not in any way, shape, or form anti-gun. There's a three million man standing militia in Venezuela. You don't hear about those issues that we have here down there. It's a culture issue. And that's another video for another day. But the situation has gone from bad to worse regarding the current administration in D.C. and what they're willing to do to get their way. They're desperate. And the world sees it now. The world understands very clearly now that it wasn't mismanagement or evil, terrible, horrible socialism that caused the problems in Venezuela. It was Washington, D.C. and the sanctions. Why? Because they're doing it again and again and again. We're going to ramp up to this level of sanction. We're going to ramp up to that level of sanction. We're going to go all in on sanctions. For what purpose? Well, to cause financial heartache and grief so that the leader of that country steps down, not realizing that the dollar is not the only way to get things done anymore. And when you force people's hands like they have here, they find other ways to get around it. And that's why DC is now having to attack other countries that originally they were basically allied with. They're saying, yeah, we'll let you do this business and that business, but as long as you don't come out and support them now, totally different. Oh, wait, but there are certain companies that are allowed. Let's see if I can find that here. What are those companies that are allowed to, to do business in Venezuela without any sanction whatsoever? It's in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. The order maintains some exemptions for companies that do business with state oil company, Venezuelan state oil company, PDVSA. And licenses published on Tuesday reiterated that companies like Chevron and Halliburton can continue to do business with PDVSA. Golly, imagine that. Everybody else in the world, nope, 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 we're going to attack you unless you're Chevron or Halliburton. And it's something where this loudmouth is just basically talking to hear himself speak. Because he knows what he's doing is just going to cause a different alignment of how things get paid for. It's not the job of DC to police every financial transaction around the world. Say, if you transact in a way that we agree with, then we'll do ABC. But if you don't, we'll then step in to the private sector and tell on North American businesses who they can and who they can't deal with. Gosh, that sounds a lot like evil, terrible, horrible socialism, doesn't it? Government intervening in the private sector because it doesn't like something going on politically in the world? It doesn't agree with another government? For an administration that slams socialism, it has really done a hell of a lot to interject government into the private sector. There are things that 
will never be realized by this administration because they don't have the mind for it. They don't have, and I mean all of them, the guy who's in charge and the idiots that he surrounded himself with. They're yes men, and they don't understand that this has been going on since before they took office. <clears throat> And continuing the same playbook, these people will just improvise, adapt, and overcome. Which is what they have done magnificently. And it is a great teaching moment. Because when you see that we have an administration that wants to engage in this ridiculous tariff trade war with China, look who ends up winning. Brazil. Because China say, okay, we're not going to buy crops from Americans anymore, and then the U.S. is going to tax all these goods, and you can't do business with Venezuela, so Brazil is just going to sell food to Venezuela. They're on their border. <clears throat> There's nothing D.C. can do about that. There's absolutely zero D.C. can do to keep Brazil from selling food to either China or Venezuela. In fact, you could make the argument that D.C. policy has done more to bring China, to bring Russia into the Western Hemisphere, into South America, by this heavy-handed bullshit. 7 August 2019, Chinese firm eyes billions of dollars in Sao Paulo tenders. CR. 20, a subsidiary of China Railway Construction Corporation, is interested in billions of dollars in infrastructure tenders in the Brazilian state of Sao Paulo. Now, I suppose these could be jobs that North American firms could be looking to get into, but no. Why? Very simply put, it's too much of a political hot potato. It's, there's just too much headache dealing with North America vis-a-vis -vis Washington, D.C. You can't do it anymore. It's just easier to deal with China. And there's this thing called <clears throat> the Sucre down in South America. And it's they're trying to replace it with the Petro, the cryptocurrency. But they still use this down there. And Farmers from Ecuador, farmers from Peru, farmers from Colombia have no problem loading up their crops and selling them to Venezuelans who come in to buy and they bring them back. And it, DC does not have the uh, ability to interject themselves this way. They can threaten to all they want. What are they going to do? Sanction all of Latin America? Sanction all of South America? hurting all of these alliances, driving these people together to see all of us as their enemy. That's going to be the reality. You can sit and stare in the mirror and call yourself right for supporting this uh, ridiculousness in D.C. And maybe in your theoretical world you might be, in, but in the real world, in the real world, there has not been a time in my life where I have seen so much damage done to this country by one administration in less than three years. Carter included. Never seen anything like it. And you're going to have to, and I mean we, when I say you, are going to have to come to grips with the fact that the way forward isn't going to be well, gosh, if the right was wrong, then the left must be the answer. No, it's not true. The left-right RD paradigm is the problem. This is just the right-hand version of it. Let's say, you know, this guy's in for eight, and then another eight, we go all the way over to the other side. And then we go all the way back over to the right again in 16 years. Who would deal with someone like that? Who would deal with a schizophrenic country like that? Or person? Every eight years slogging from one side to the other. That's the problem we're facing right now. And that's why D.C. 
doesn't have the ability to grasp why they keep losing in Venezuela. Because the people of Venezuela have a different value system. And they would rather suffer and die on their feet as Venezuelans than kowtow to the Richie Riches in Doral and Parkland. And I guess I'll just leave that there. Like, share, subscribe.